Welcome everyone to the only official podcast on the internet. Today we have the special guest, pro ex pro league player, Marcus Dyrus, also a personal friend of mine whom I've carried through many a league game. <laughs> and he was kind enough to show his face around these parts in the presence of perhaps one of the best League of Legends players, Dr. Zalost. How are you doing, Marcus? Hey, how's it going, guys? Dyrus, glad yeah, to have hey, you. Not too bad. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for coming on to this illustrious show. Thanks for having me. <laughs> All right. So, Charlie, you I know that you like to fire out like a loose cannon if you want to pop him the first question. If not, I have about 700 ready to go. I'll save you from Andrew's horrible questions. And yeah, I'll pop one out then. So I think the most pressing thing I'd like to know about pro gaming is what, what the fuck is it about? Like... I, I've always imagined, like, mm-hmm. you were there pretty much from the genesis of esports when it really started to take off. Because now a lot of people know about it. League of Legends is huge. Millions of people watch it. But you were there from the start. How has it kind of changed, in your opinion? Um, first, let's start off where I wasn't even on TSM. But um, I was on the, his, the t- owners of TSM's brother's team, which was Epic Gamer. And how we practiced for events is... We didn't practice. We would show up for the event and just get second place every time. After a while, um, our team lost motivation. And then, uh, well, I mean, we, everyone was just doing their own thing. They didn't really take everything seriously. And then TSM dropped their top line. Well, their top player decided that he wanted to play solo queue instead of, uh, um, you know, practice like in scrimmages and such. And so that's when I joined TSM and I would, and back in the day you would practice for maybe, I, I think it, it was just varies a lot because there was really no set amount of time you're supposed to practice. There's no standard back then. So sometimes you'd practice for like half a day, the whole day, I don't know, maybe a couple of hours, maybe there's no practice at all. But uh, the most of the practice that you would get would be from solo queue. And uh, as time went on and as esports evolved, practice started to become more scheduled and, uh, you know, a lot more um, organized. So you would have like scrim blocks. Oh, what was that? I said a lot more effort went into like, you know, getting those scheduling down, the the practicing down. Yeah, yeah. So, so... Yeah, as as time went on, it became more competitive. Um, There's more aspects like uh, in season three, coaches were implemented and then analysts came into the scene. Um, You would you would still wouldn't like increase the amount of practice done. I think it's a lot different for other regions. But for America, you would basically be playing solo queue all day until practice happened. Um, It wouldn't necessarily be long practice like maybe six to eight hours is probably the longest scrim practice that you'd (laughs) ever get which is uh honestly i mean you just you get breaks in between of course and so what it wasn't really i mean maybe it sounds bad i guess but normally players would be playing solo queue for a minimum of eight hours a day um it can go up to like 14 or 16 hours depending on the player um you cannot play any less than eight hours because if you do you just get bad at the game by not playing it that's what i always told charlie but he never listened well i was gonna say yeah you know solo queue he was always i'm i'm tired i'm sleepy kaya i haven't eaten in three days kaya (laughs) fucking amateur (laughs) that's i mean it's fair though because solo queue doesn't translate over to like professional play like i can pound underage undilated anus in solo queue all day and night but that doesn't mean i'm ready for the big dogs league that takes like so, organized scrims. Well, Dyrus, we brought you in as a consultant to confirm what I've always suspected. I'm not bad at the game. It's, the game is rigged, right? <laughs> it's the teammates no, it's who are my, bad. It, it's it can not be. to diminish your whatever your area of expertise, but it's like hundred percent luck, right? You just go lucky. <laughs> there, there is luck involved, but I wouldn't say hundred uh, percent. Okay, that's all. <laughs> Cut it from there, Jackson. It, <laughs> luck is involved. That, well, that thank is you honestly, for listening to this episode. We're done. That's <laughs> honestly all I needed because I get so sick and tired of people who love the pro gaming scene act like it's this exact science with no random involved. 
Oh Thank no, there's you. there's no there's there's way too many factors to even count. But um oh. there there are some main factors that do influence all those other factors and one of that is the amount of games that you play. There are some players who let's say at the start of the season it'll be like maybe a couple months in the average amount of games would be like 100 or 200 but then uh there will always there'll be that one player who just non-stop plays the game they don't even have to be good they just get like i don't know a thousand games in compared to the 200 games because they just are playing the game over and over at the very start of the season there's a lot of luck involved so if you get rank one in the first three months and then you see all these reddit threads oh i'm rank one ask me anything you know it's just like they played a lot they got a little lucky with their teammates and it, it usually evens out later because uh the people that are really good at the game are the ones that aren't only just good mechanically but adapt to the patch changes really quickly and mm -hmm. sometimes you'll see random people on top because of, you know, I don't know, the one trick a champion. And it's like, oh, I deserved rank one all along. But then their champion just gets buffed. So it, it really, really varies. Like, um, if you know any personalities in League that are one tricks and they just, like, get to, like, super high elo, it's probably because their champion got buffed. So it, it really, really depends usually. That was always the problem I had when I reached rank one too. They'd start nerfing my champions and shit like that. Yeah, when I was Diamond Plat top tier rankings rolling around playing literally the worst ranked champs at the time, I'd just wait for the patch notes and see who was the worst and roll them and get mm -hmm. all these ranks. But I was tired of all these one champion players just coming out and getting lucky with the buffs, you know what I mean? It really it's an upsetting time in gaming. I think it's I was just attack bay. <laughs> Yeah, good knife skins and such. I think it's worth noting, like, right off the bat, the only two people of the podcast who've seriously played League were Kai and I. <laughs> nearly, and tore our, nearly tore our friendship apart. <laughs> yeah, it is one of those yeah, games. The, so the way Charlie, I dealt with patches is I, I dropped the game. <laughs> so, Charlie, you're discounting the two years in a row that I played it? Oh, I didn't know that. I thought you only yeah. played Jax for like a month or something. No, when it when it was first really getting popular, I was on there for about a year and a half, two years, mm. on on and off. Yeah, and then I quit it for good when I realized what I was doing with my life. I I, I still think it's a fantastic game. It's just it's one of those really, really toxic. There can be really toxic environments like. You could go on oh, there yeah. with your best friend. Like, Kai and I will hold hands in public all day and all night, but we go on there. Nah. We're at each other's throats. <laughs> he used to main Tarek Papa T, as he called him back in that day. And oh, I would yeah. I'd be very upset with some of his plays, and it'd make me want to remove him <laughs> and stop talking to him. You were angry because I was able to solo anyone on their team. <laughs> yeah. Uh, reliving Kaya, the glory days. Kaya would walk in the middle of the field and just type in chat, let's go right now, and somehow just win every single game mm -hmm. on his own. If only that were the case. Andrew, you wanted to pop a couple questions. Oh man, I have a, a billion questions. So Dyrus, as a serial arsonist, why did you almost burn down TSM's house? <laughs> um, basically what happened was uh, back in the day, I mean, I'm sure you, you guys all have encountered this problem. When you get too many friend requests and there's no clear all button, <laughs> um, you kind of just... Uh, you just got I downloaded an auto clicker because I had to click decline so much <laughs> and there's only so many people you could have on your friends list. Mm -hmm. And so when I went to the microwave, put in the hungry man lunch or the dinner, the frozen dinner, um, instead of four minutes, I clicked <clears> it for 40 and I didn't it didn't register in my brain that it went for 40. I thought it was four. So I put I just quickly put four, press start. And I walked up to take a sh quick shower. It's like, oh, it'll only take me a couple of minutes to take a quick shower and then play some solo queue. And as I'm in the shower, I hear burning and it's like, oh, shit. So I run down. You hear burning? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm sorry. His, not his teammates in the home burning. were screaming, burning. <laughs> <laughs> burning. Oh, I, we're burning, Dyrus. Why did you murder us? <laughs> the sound of orphans. I smell like the smell of burnt, like. You know what that smells yeah. like. Um, and Fire. so I ran down with the towel and I was like, oh shit. And I stopped the microwave and it was just smoking everywhere. And we had to call the fire department. And yeah, it was a, it was a, it was a fire hazard slash uh, health hazard. So 
So basically, if, long story short, all the all the fans actually nearly burned down your house. It wasn't your fault. Yeah. <laughs> you motherfuckers out there who are sending you know this who you innocent are. man friend requests trying to be his pal and play video games with him. That's You almost murdered this man. Sometimes you don't always see the kind of impact your actions have, but I think now is a pretty clear case. I hope you feel very disappointed in your actions. Yeah, if we go send those friend requests to me instead. If we go by solo key logic, then yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, fuck that takes my another question because I have a list here of some of your solo queue IDs, and one of them is one eight hundred microwave. And oh. I guess now I've been filled in as to where you got that one from. You can oh, cross yeah. that off of page five of your list of questions. <laughs> I got exactly. A, I got a Twitch emote and too. And can sleep now. <laughs> <laughs> my my job on the podcast is done. Finally. <laughs> We've worked up to this point after, what, 30 episodes? Yeah, I, we made it. I actually have a Twitch emote that's like twice as big as regular Twitch emotes because mm -hmm. uh, it's like back in the day, Twitch let you get emotes that were pretty big. And so it's just like a giant microwave across the screen on the Twitch chat. <laughs> that was cool. actually The rest of us have to use five pixels. <laughs> yeah. <some> things. <laughs> we have like one tiny Hershey stain on an underwear yeah. for it. And they looked at it and went, that kind of looks like a man smiling. You're going to have to redo that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, it's, uh, I know about <laughs> yeah, that. that. That brings me to another question real quick. And I know I'm cutting you off, Charlie, but fine, deal man. with it. it, it Dyrus, be honest, how do you feel about the whole industry being turned into Super Weenie Hut Jr., what with the toxicity and all that, where you're not even allowed to shit talk anymore? Oh, Sorry, can you repeat the first part of that? <laughs> the, the, oh, yeah. the, the important part of the question. He wanted to clarify which weenie hut you were talking about. <laughs> the super the junior one. one. Well, I, I'm just talking about this stuff like I, back in the day, even when Charlie and I were playing rights games, it was very particular about their pro players not being allowed to do the least amount of shit talking or insulting and these mm -hmm. days you see it in other games too where the developer himself will come out and cry and ban people if they say something mean how, how do you feel about that whole thing um i haven't seen any cases recently but as for toxicity i have like videos of where i said back in closed beta where it's like i want to cut this guy's throat out or something and that's something i would never ever say in my uh -huh. Well, today, but uh -huh. when I was younger, I was very uh, energetic and think, I mean, I could link you the video later, but basically um, the closest exclusive, <laughs> the closest <laughs> thing I've gotten to is uh, I rage quit on stream once and then they, they banned me for a day and they said that, well, actually, no, I don't think I got banned. I got, I said, or they said I got one warning, and if I get three warnings, I get perma banned from competitive play, and so Jesus. that was Jesus. the closest Jesus. thing that's, for me. That's the Wait for stuff rage I mean, quitting? Like, yeah, that, was, that, was, uh, that, that sounds like horse shit to me. If you're that upset, I feel the most appropriate thing to do is to stop playing. Even yeah, if you but, fuck your team over, it's like I'd rather do that than have people be toxic or throw games or any of that by fucking with people. The, but the no, big Andrew, problem was I was. You want that honor, don't you? <laughs> I want to hear what right Tyrus games is honor say. badges. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. The 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 problem with it was that it's because I was streaming and I I forget the number, but back in the day I used to get usually average around ten or twenty k viewers, mm -hmm. and so I would be setting an example that. Uh, it's okay to rage quit, which is not what they I, not uh, want. But if it was off stream, they probably wouldn't have cared as much. It's just they don't they don't like it when stuff like I, that happens. That sounds like one of That's the most fucking targeted instances of bullshit I've heard in my life. Like if you if you get that upset at the game, like I get I get minor quips here and there, or kind of getting frumpy, whatever. But if you're that upset that it's affecting you as a person, I I believe the appropriate response is to stop playing for a while. It, it sucks that you're quitting on your team, but, I mean, if you're that level of mad, what is, what is the more appropriate response? It, Fiz, like, what the fuck? I, I understand what you're saying. I'm just saying that I've played, like, at that time, I, I was in, like, four, three to four years into the game, and it's one of those things where I, I just quit that game, and then I try to play the next game. You know, it's not, it's not like one of those things where I, it's just, like, the entire, like, league-related. When I was a pro, I was... 
I have to play and uh, like practice. I mean, I should take breaks, but when I'm streaming, uh, my idea was that, okay, I'm just going to log on to a different account and I'm just done with that game. Instead mm -hmm. of uh, leagues pissing me off, I want to take a break from it. But it was like, this game sucks. I want to move on to the next one. <laughs> yeah, that's how I used to feel about cooking. Until I found Blue Apron. Fuck, they you used... stole it from me. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I stole your thunder there. Today I've got the Blue Apron crown. <laughs> oh, he's got it. He's wearing the apron. <laughs> and it's blue, <laughs> bitch. Ugh. So speaking of aprons that are blue and also quitting on cooking... Uh, I can't cook for shit, but Blue Apron, he lays it out for my dumbass, and even I can succeed in that area. Andrew, why don't you tell him a little about it, since you were so eager to hop on that train? I mean, Blue Apron is the number one, not the number two, four, or even the number seven <laughs> fresh ingredient and recipe delivery service in the country. Their mission is to make incredible <laughs> home cooking accessible to everyone, including people like Charlie. And that's a that's a monumentous achievement that they are succeeding at. You mean tiny people? Yeah, you're yes. the smallest of men. Charlie looks at the top shelf and goes, "Damn it, I need the pepper. This is this is impossible." I'll call Blue Apron and have him send me some over at <laughs> eye level. They send you a strong wrestler who picks you up on his beefy arms. Uh, so, <laughs> God damn it. Look, uh, let's just, let's just cut the brass tacks here. Blue Apron. Established partnerships with over 150 local farms, fisheries, and ranchers across the United States to get you things such as seafood that is sourced sustainably under standards developed in partnership with the Monterey Bay Aquarium Seafood Watch and beef, chicken, and pork that is responsibly raised. What I'm trying to express to you here, folks, that the food at Blue Apron is really, really good. Even the animals like getting killed. Yeah. Go to blueapron.com slash official. And also shop at Blue Apron because they are a very tasty and affordable option. Dyrus, as a man who's eaten food before, let me ask you a question. Do you like eating? Yeah. He nearly burnt his house. I assume you would really <laughs> like Blue Apron. Do you? And do you like having things to. given to you? Oh, I order delivery all the time. Exactly. So if you had fresh ingredients delivered straight to your door, you would call it a win-win. Yeah. Dyrus, when you set that microwave to 40 minutes, the universe knew it was providence. It was an act of providence because that's how long it takes for Blue Apron, for you to make a Blue Apron meal. Ooh. Instead, you burnt, you nearly <laughs> killed people. Or less. The adjacent or less. He might not have even needed all that murder time. You could have been eating a delicious meal rather than, I don't know, eating a piece of charcoal. Jackson, why don't you why don't you wrap us all up in a nice convenient yeah. apron because we're we're getting all over the place with our enthusiasm. <laughs> wrap us up in a nice apron, all right. Give us a good So we can check yeah. out you can check out this week's menu and get your first three meals free with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash official. You'll love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home cooked meals with Blue Apron. So don't wait. That's blueapron.com slash official. All right, well, actually, uh, there's a question I've been wanting to ask. So, Dyrus, you've done streaming for a long time, and you've been in the competitive scene, and you've played other games as well, but what do you prefer doing? Do you prefer the atmosphere of being in a competitive environment and competing for the grand prize, the, the glory, or do you prefer just kind of kicking back, playing solo queue, streaming, and maybe streaming other games as well? Um, I have mixed feelings about both because for there was a time where I really, really enjoyed competitive play. And as time went on, I just felt burnt out on competitive play, um, trying to work hard with uh, my teammates to, you know, do our best. And then in solo queue, it's like it's more relaxing. But at the same time, I get a bunch of idiots on my team half of the games. No, but uh, it, it's still more relaxing. So. I mean, I, I prefer being more relaxed right now because I don't have the same drive I, I used to. If not League of Legends, is there any other game that you could have seen yourself reaching that same level of proficiency with? Um, I, I wouldn't know because the only reason why I felt like I got really good at League was because I enjoyed it and I played it from the start. Um, I, don't, I think if I played any other game if it's already been out I, it's really hard to catch up but for league it just kind of clicked with me i don't think i would have been able to go um pro in many other games i think the closest that i could have gotten was overwatch because i played overwatch since the start 
when it when it was in closed beta and i got to like top 500 on two accounts for two seasons in a row so i was like i was getting offers to join pro teams at the start and do stuff like that but i don't want to do that because my fan base is league and so if i play overwatch then i'm basically abandoning yeah Yeah, Yeah. i basically abandoned them i don't want to do that do you feel locked into playing league for the rest of your life and does that scare you at all um I've it's something I've thought about for a long time and I've decided that uh I try to decide that I wanted to try and do other games on stream and such but as time mm-hmm. went on I was like all right league's still kind of the hot thing right now for me and I should do it as long as I as long as possible for as many like all the people that want to watch me do it and when mm-hmm. it finally decide like dies one day I'll make the op- I'll make the conscious choice to switch to another game. Um, Ultimately, I'm going to want to play the game I enjoy the most, and I've been playing video games all my life, so I think I'm a pretty good judge of uh, if a game is, like, super fun or not for, like, Mm. at least for the genres of games that I've played. I mean, not, like, not all video games, but just, like, for the specific amount of games I've played. If I have fun, I think that other people would enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. That makes so, sense. are there any games that have come out recently that you've enjoyed? Not, not like to stream or anything like that. I'll get pro out, but it, like, what's been your most recent favorite game? Um, my that's funny. Uh, it's actually been a PUBG. I've been playing it with my <laughs> friends and stuff. And uh, um, the owner of TSM Reggie, we we play PUBG together like all the time. I mean, not so much recently because I've played another game called Foxhole, which is like a war simulator game. Oh, yeah. I did play a few rounds of that. That Yeah. It's the only problem with it is it's a time sink. So it just takes forever to win a game. And you can't do anything alone as efficiently. You just work together with other people. So, I mean, there hasn't been a lot of games for me that has really caught my eye yet. I'm still kind of waiting on game developers to make this super insane game to blow all these current games out of the water because i feel like that like the evolution of gaming for like what new games are is kind of like come to a halt because i feel like companies are just Mm -hmm. like oh um just this series and then added two to it and all it is is just like a couple of new characters and reworked graphics and a couple of new things and they just call it number two and it's just like this is almost the same game you know that is my favorite game number two I loved it. (laughs) Well, let's say, let's take League of Legends, for example. Let's say, um, you know, the old League graphics compared to nowadays. What if they called the old League of Legends, like, just League of Legends 1, then today's, like, League of Legends 2, but it's basically the same game. The thing about League is, and why it's so popular is because they always update it, and it's all, the game's always changing. But for a lot of games nowadays, they don't really... It, it just feels like we're not really going farther into the future other than, I guess, virtual reality, but that's even at the start of wherever it is. So that's it's kind of also fizzling. There's not much like investments being made yeah. in that field. And, you know. <laughs> other than you. <laughs> Jackson's keeping that whole entire industry afloat with his 3 a.m. purchases. <laughs> so, Dyrus, I, I, I have a question that maybe for me is a, I'm the only one who's going to find this as a burning, passionate thing to learn about. What is the shtick and the direction and idea going into a team photo for a big league gaming event <laughs> where everyone puts their back t- to each other and folds their arms and looks super tough and cool. And there's all that dark, harsh lighting. Like do, do how, how are those treated among the community? Do people think they're really awesome ways to advertise themselves? Do they think they're a joke? Are they just mandated by the people who run the tournaments? Like ha- what, what goes on with those? Um, I think the idea is kind of uh, to make it more and more similar to, you know, how in like wrestling, how they have the entrances and oh, the God. intro <laughs> yes. and all that stuff. So you're admitting <laughs> it's fake. Well, I'm not saying I'm not saying it's all fake. They when I mean, I don't know for recently, but I know that for when they're taking like giving taking photos of you they they uh there's a guy that talks to you sometimes i mean it depends on the photographer it's like um you you would have to ask a different current pro pro player for this now because they have like pictures of them like either flexing or making poses or (laughs) random stuff like Mm -hmm. that but um i recently was in like an 
like an Intel ad where for a photo shoot where they just want like the tough look and they're just trying to be super like super serious with like uh if you don't have uh this product then or are you are you hardcore enough for this product or are something you hardcore like that? enough to sign up for blue I, apron yeah that, that's what that's <laughs> it's, what the ad it's was just, <laughs> it's just like the cool like i mean it's not i i think it depends on the person as for me i don't mm-hmm. I don't care too much about like what whatever they want. I'm fine with doing. I don't. Right. I don't feel very emotional about a lot of things. I'm kind of. I'm kind of similar to my right. laziness and my voice. I mean, because so. we've we've had we've had minor touchings on this topic where it's it to me it makes a lot more sense in a physical sport such as like, I don't know, basketball or like you said, wrestling, where the people involved are usually physically intimidating or, you know, athletic mm-hmm. and build or all that. And I, I, I'm just wondering what your personal thoughts on these kind of publicity photos is where typically your lineup is not people, you know, like if they came at you like that, you wouldn't be like, oh, guys, don't hurt me. Don't, here's my wallet. It's it's more just kind of... <laughs> You're struggling so hard to be polite. It, it, mm-hmm. I mean, at the end of the day, to a degree, it's silly. It's definitely silly to some degree. You know, it, it's not it's not like cringeworthy. It's not awful. But you, there's definitely a layer of this is kind of funny to it. And I'm just wondering what your take on it is. You know what I mean? Um, I think it depends on the player. Because uh, let's say you take Faker, for example. If you, if you know who that is. He has like the crossed arms and the look mm-hmm. he's like one of the best mid layers ever like sure if he if he comes at you in like a fist fight of course yeah it's not going to be the same compared to like a super buff guy who or super athletic physical pro from i don't know foot, look at this shit football talking. or the nba <laughs> i want to see you fight faker now yeah faker if you're listening he's calling you out yeah come on the podcast I mean, and duke it out we'll have an official <laughs> wrestling match i mean the the point of it is that you look at them and then I mean, you don't really look at them because uh, they're just playing the character in the game. They're just like really, really good at it. And I mean, I I don't really. I mean, I'm just saying that's that's what it is. I don't I don't know what else to say about it. I think it. the I think the yeah. question Andrew's trying to get at is: Do you think maybe esports takes itself a bit too seriously? Yeah, that's in a good spite one. of it being so new. That is a great way would, to take it. Yeah. Do you think it would uh, benefit okay. from being a little more laid back? Like, let's. Let's show our professional athletes in the the game here yeah. doing something more relatable or fun, you know, instead of like looking yeah. like they're ready for a fight. And actually, um, to, like, um, would, would would it be better if esports was trying to be pro wrestling rather than well, the NBA? <laughs> yeah, to addendum to that, that's that's that as well. And it's, do you think it's a good idea that they're copying after already established sports? Do you think the best way for them to get maybe more serious or bigger or more appealing is to go down this, you know, following the realm of wrestling and basketball and all their presentations. Um, well, I think ultimately it's still a competition and it's a competition that does strain you to your like mental limits. So while it may not be physically intimidating, um, if you ever have played a game against a pro player in League of Legends, they're just gonna, just like how you would get angry at the game for, you know things go wrong and like you it depends how passionate you are about it i feel like because if you've ever played against a pro player they just basically fuck your shit up <laughs> and i mean for some people that can be rage inducing for others it could be like all right well he's just fucking insane and that's it um I, as for like which direction to take it i i honestly don't know like i i'm not the person that decides or i mean as for how i think about i don't really i don't really care people always argue about calling it like a sport or esports like no, it's I, definitely I, a sport re- that shouldn't be argued yeah it, it definitely yeah. it takes the same amount of time to master a video game as it would a sport it it's, mm-hmm. should 100 yeah. percent be called it's, a sport yeah, I, 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 what I'm saying is that I I just don't really, I don't really I you guess care as much. Yeah, you don't give a shit about it one way or the other. Well, I mean, just, yeah. yeah, for for the most part, I don't care as much because mm-hmm. um whether it gets bigger or not. I mean, I guess the game itself, if it gets bigger, it benefits me. But I'm not really a part of that scene, and I feel like that question's more directed towards the people that. 
I mean, I, I just don't, I wouldn't know what I was doing. Like if I had to decide something like that, I'd, I don't really have much of an opinion, I guess. That's, that's totally fair. Mm. Uh, now or with I, the, re oh, I still sorry. keep, oh no, you're totally fine. I was just going to change, change gears here. Cause I keep up with most of the league stuff going on in the pro scene and stuff. I still do keep up with all of it. And I know recently there's been that drama about some of the pro players getting uh, allegedly mistreated at one of their team houses and uh, neglected by riot staff and the uh, mm -hmm. higher ups and shit like that. I'm not asking for an opinion on anything like that, but did you ever have to go through anything similar while you were in the pro scene? Was there any type of drama that mistreated maybe mistreated? How? <laughs> well, like, no. well, the way well. the headlines on like the subreddit make it seem, it seemed like they're fucking frying them in ovens the, at the their team house and shit. <laughs> yeah, Charlie, the subreddit's gonna make it seem like half the team became Nazis and the other half is starting a revolution in the basement. Well, I, I know the subreddit isn't the best information, but just reading through all of the stuff and like the riot official statements, I don't know how much of it is true or not. But the way they make it seem, it seems awful as if people were getting their throats slit if they weren't performing well in their lanes. Um, I don't know. Like, I mean, I know there's a tainted minds thing. I think that was pretty unacceptable on the the organization's part. And there's a lot of bad orgs, but um, I've been on TSM that my entire pro career and tsm has always treated their players really well and no one's pointing a gun at me or threatening me to say otherwise it's just <laughs> Sounds every, suspicious. every yeah, not every a problem but this every podcast is sponsored by tsm <laughs> every player that you you see that has played with tsm league related besides the ones that were I guess kicked off they they would all have good things to say about the organization so i've never had to deal with anything bad basically um as for like things that may have happened on the in terms of like events or like uh, let's say mlg hosts the event or ride hosts the event like anything that happens otherwise that it wouldn't be related to the team so it's just like factors that you can't control that that's probably the worst that gets uh, like, that's fair. That's good that you mm -hmm. have an to go through it because you read about that in a lot of esports. Since it's so new, a lot of the developers and stuff think they can get away with certain things. Like in Smite, they hyped up a million dollar prize pool and then they paid them like a piece of gum and some spit in the mouth and stuff like that. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> and then yeah. they asked for the gum back. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Now, Dyrus, if we're uh... oh, Charlie, did you have another one? Oh, I was just gonna. I was just gonna. Ask another question. I'm full of questions on uh, this shit because I, I find it all really interesting. And ever since I was a kid, I wanted to be like the best at a game. But unfortunately, I'm pretty shit at most of the games I play. Says the House of Caravan world record holder. I'm glad you brought up that nice source spot because that record got absolutely fucking ass blasted a month and a half ago. Well, that's motivation. I can't, I can't beat that record. But <laughs> the question I was going to ask is circling back to the whole shit talking thing. Let's say riot 100 percent endorsed shit talk and they encouraged it at their events and you were still in the pro play what would be the best shit talk you could come up with for your opponents <laughs> give us something here give us your best one line insult that you would say to an opponent uh, well it would it would depend and i'm not really the the like the hardest i go at people is just i just say things like they're bad or like they fucking <laughs> they just fucking suck dick going for and oh fuck dude calm going down for scalps all right that's i mean and then i i wouldn't really like go like harder unless i like really hated someone like i i just i i every time i should talk unless they deserve it it's just like can't really think of anything good <laughs> and when people are like why why do you think they're bad it's like it's just facts they just fucking say you know it's not there's no <sighs> like any shit talk i've done through my pro career it hasn't really been that hard because i just focus on myself that's probably a good thing i guess <laughs> yeah i mean if if it was encouraged you, you'd probably it things would get pretty violent I feel like if I was openly shit talked to, like even even players that were in the scene, like not not many people have like openly shit talked to me, 
but they usually kind of like passively aggressive type it or fans do it. But I'm pretty sure if it was that kind of environment, I'd probably try to kill someone. So <laughs> it's, it's probably a good thing that it's not like Jesus. that. So Don't I'm, uncage I'm, the beast. Yeah. I'm, I'm well, just you hear that faker? Out there. <laughs> no, I mean, no, like most pro players are really, really nice. Not like, there, there's just a couple, and some of them shit talk just to make it entertaining. But I think if Riot did do something like that, it would be, I guess, more entertaining, but more, I guess, dangerous, I feel like. Yeah, it, yeah, I can definitely see that. I was just thinking more like, you know, how McGregor and Mayweather are hyping up all the ticket sales with shit talking. I would like to see yeah. that for League of Legends in the pro scene. <laughs> I, I think that'd I would be really fun. I would definitely see it in in moderation because if they trash talk all the time, that won't be as entertaining. Oh yeah, so. no, definitely mm-hmm. not. I'm just talking like the big ones, you know, the worlds, the the splits and stuff. Yeah, I it's hard for me because I I was competitive to win, but I've never been like <laughs> I I've never really thought about that. I've I've only had enough room to think about myself to do my very best and every time people do shit talk it's always blown up in their face every single time yeah Uh, there's so many memes and jokes made out of teams and players that have shit talked and it just blows back at them even harder than ever but some of them they you know they bob and weave and deal with it and then they come back with more shit talk later and those are the entertaining professional players so Yep. Mm. So, Dyrus, I have I have a question, and Jackson and Kaya have been messaging me out of chat constantly because they are just dying to get this question in too, since they've been so elaborately loud. Nice. Uh, so if we're if we're getting into the nitty gritty and the darker sides of the whole the shit talking and all that, I want to know what your thoughts on drug use in the competitive gaming <laughs> sport are, and by that I mean. <laughs> No, I'm I'm completely Wait, I am completely used Adderall, ADD Crocodile. meds. Crocodile, oh, is a yeah, big one now. Of mine. Well, no, I'm being completely serious. Yeah, do you steroids? No, Darius, I'm serious. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm, I'm asking him. Well, he probably does. He's a big swole boy. But so, I, from <laughs> what I've read, and I could be completely and utterly wrong, and if I am, please tell me so. But there is apparently a huge amount within pro gaming circles of like Adderall and ADD. And all any any sort of mental enhancing shit getting passed around just to compete at the highest level possible. Is there any comments you have on that or anything interesting you could bring in? Any insight? Um, well, the closest thing I've heard about was that uh, one of the players I played against, uh, he smoked weed because it was too stressful for him. So he just mm-hmm. smoked weed before the match. And that way he wouldn't be like losing his losing his shit because the game could be really stressful. That that is the closest thing. Like they're definitely that fiend. Did he? <laughs> yeah, that guy should burn in hell. But did did he no, perform no. any better? Or well, he probably didn't. You know how tilt is in <laughs> league. It probably helps a little bit with that. Right. I mean, I. I mean, people think. People think I smoke weed just because of my voice, but I don't really do anything at all. The closest thing that I've come to like anything making me more awake is like, I guess, an energy drink or, I mean, after I retired, I discovered coffee and I was just devastated about that because if I had coffee when I was pro, I'd probably be a lot better. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but um, <laughs> Those sleepless there, nights, damn, if only yeah, I, I knew the secret. Who needs sleep when I can chug caffeine? <laughs> I mean, even like one cup of coffee would have saved me like efficient practice. But anyways, like mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't think that pro players should be taking drugs or anything like that. And I'm I'm pretty sure there are people out out there out there that do. It's just that I think it's wrong, and I hope that people just don't do it. I I don't have any knowledge or information about people that do it. I okay. just know that, I just feel like if you're gonna be in a competition, everything needs to be clean. You know, mm-hmm. yeah, a lot of playing field. Well, yeah. do you do you think that that maybe could potentially unlock like I don't know some secret mental barrier or something? Do you think the people who would take those meds would maybe actually have an advantage over their competition? Or? Oh yeah, for sure. No, there's no doubt about that. Reaction times and uh, knowledge in the game, like you, I mean, you could give like a challenger player 
Adderall, but it won't make a difference against an LCS player because it's not only about the reaction times, it's also about the knowledge and positioning. You could have the best reactions in the world for League of Legends, but it won't always matter as much. For example, there's people at script in League, like they pick Zeraf and they don't miss a single skill shot. But even even with that, there's just so many other factors. I think for other games, such as, you know, first person shooters like Counter Strike like taking Adderall to like move faster, like react faster. I think every little bit like counts when it comes to reaction times. I think people definitely get an advantage off of that. I don't, I don't see why they wouldn't. Like I heard people in StarCraft take that to, you know, just be more focused and, you know, they run at like what, 300 actions, 600 actions per minute or something. It's superhuman. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Just based pro like, Starcraft it, is, is watching something else, man. And it's I, incredible. Superhuman. Yeah. And I know, <laughs> I know it gives you an advantage because I mean, it, you can just com compare the most basic example. Let's say you're going into a league of legends game and you're feeling tired. Um, like it's basically playing like playing against someone who's tired compared to playing to someone who's awake. It's like three different levels, like sleepy, normal, and then someone's just fucking jacked <laughs> up and will put like someone who's jacked up on that stuff who plays against someone who's just like, you know, normal and awake and concentrated. They're going to just seem slower than the guy who's just like freaking <clears throat> out of his mind with Adderall. Now, I mean, I could be wrong. I, that's that's just what makes sense to me like common sense if oh, people yeah. did do that but i feel like people would have an advantage if that was the case i, I mm -hmm. especially think with the the devil's lettuce the, the marijuana the weeds and stuff i definitely think in a competitive environment that'd be a huge advantage because you you'd be a lot more laid back if something goes wrong you wouldn't you you know as you said get tilted off it so i can 100 yeah see you'd that. also yeah, be yeah. a lot cooler and everyone there would like you more that's yeah yeah, the, the, other, drug, though, the other factor is uh, if you're playing with teammates and they, they, uh, I mean, let's say you get more mad at them faster because you're concentrating and you're, mm -hmm. you know, like it, it can backfire too in a team environment for sure. So, I mean, there's just so many different factors. Taking right. it out of esports for just a moment, I could not be the only person who actually wants to see drugs in sports. I would love to I see, want to see oh, people oh, yeah. just jacked leagues. up beyond human limits with the latest technology we got. I want CRISPR to be used to create Uber mention uh, I that want, will then be pitted against each other in, on the fields. I want to watch baseball, but with exoskeletons. So like when they hit home <laughs> runs, they go like a thousand feet in the air, but then the outfielders jump that high and catch it and rocket it back down. I think it'd be amazing. Exactly. Like, I, I think there should at least be a separate league. Like, I understand that people enjoy it also for the integrity of the whole thing, where you know, they will root for the best athlete who got it by his own sweat of his own brow. But a separate league where they just got enhanced by machines or some genetic engineering, that would be cool. I just want to see balls flying over my head, just burning as I enter the atmosphere. <laughs> God, that'd be so amazing. I thought about that exact same thing before when I was in college. We were talking about that. Someone else brought that up, and I thought that was the coolest fucking idea. If you just had the absolute best in modern steroids technology, yeah, yep. nanotechnology and shit, enhance these human beings and put them against each other. That is definitely, definitely something I would love to see. Exactly. I mean, some nations already do that. Like, Russia keeps getting caught in almost every Olympic Games. That's where true. It comes out they've been doping their national team for decades. So why not just unleash them? Why not just go... Hey, you're, you looks like you guys are good at this. Yeah. Let's just get rid of all the regulations. Just turn your athletes into monsters and let, let them let them <laughs> fight. God, I'm sure cool. I'm sure it would be super entertaining. But uh, you, you already oh, yeah. know how people would feel about that. <laughs> oh yeah, it would not go over well. But my God, would that make for some great entertainment? No, no, yeah, that's why you should have the separate leagues. Yeah, what would you call it? What name would you I give it? I have no idea. I'd give it something comically stupid, like the the super duper league of kaiju's squaring off or something. I'd call I'd it, it Cool just... Ball. <laughs> it's like baseball, but cool. <laughs> you could bring back the extreme convention. 
Ooh. You guys remember that? Oh, like man, in the 90s yeah. where everything Kaya, used to be extreme? Do not, yeah. br- do not bring back my love of Slam Ball on this podcast. You'll regret it. Oh my god, Slam Ball. <laughs> Slam Ball was the fucking greatest. <laughs> I watched it every day. Dude, Slam is that Ball. The one, is that basketball with trampolines? Yes, yeah. it is basketball with trampolines. It was so <laughs> awesome. Was did you see the best? Did you see the injury highlights where like the dude, I think the one that eventually got it taken off air where the dude came down and his like ankle popped out of his skin. No, Ooh. I watched Ooh. the actual sport. Oh but yeah, well now yeah. that now that you said trampolines, though, that would also be your cool enhancement, changing the fields up a little, snake pits and all that. <laughs> I I, I, I you really equate snake pits to trampolines. Ever since yeah. when I was a boy, <laughs> I read Battle Royale. I have always wanted to somehow find a way to have death games be a reality. Yeah. I, I would love to see just like instead of American Idol, it's like tonight on Fighting Island and. Like I mean, every every week, a hundred people We drop twelve pedophiles off onto an island. No, oh my I, god! Oh, that would be so cool. No, but like I, I, I just want it. I want to be able to enter it though, and not. Uh, why so would you want to go to? Why would yeah. you want to go to yeah. Fighting Island? Because like I want to find a way to do it without actually dying. Well, then that ruins the oh, so, integrity of the sport. That's yeah. the problem. That's what I'm saying. I can't think of a way to rightfully what? do it. On one hand, you have the thrill of death, but on the other hand, it's like you don't want to be in it. Well, how about I can solve this for you, Andrew? You have Fighting Island, and you don't go to it. You but, watch it. Ah, uh, but uh, but I want to be in it because it he seems wants the fame and glory. If you could like replace the death aspect with I don't know, like airsoft or something, I want to oh, yeah, do I'm that. Oh yeah, I'm sure that'd be huge. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. All right, go back to well, eighth that's, grade. Andrew. That's so why I'm fucking saying that it's, it's a problem yeah, and impossibility. Why don't you just go do I'm not. I'm not like saying, "Oh, this will be so great." Everyone watch it. I'm saying there's a problem with the system where we can't have it in reality. <laughs> what and, system are yeah. you talking about? I want you to He's name. He's talking right about now. reality. You're talking about wanting to the fear of death without actual death. Then there won't be any fear. Okay, I yeah. want you to right now in current modern day say how we could make a show like that. Make it okay. Exist. So Andrew, you you come to me. I'm the agency that arranges this battle royale. I make okay. you sign a waiver. We tell you, hey, we're not really going to kill you, but it's going to look like it. And then we inject you with some amnesia drug. And you're going to forget you even signed that stuff and that it's not really lethal. And then we just put you on the island and you do think you really, it's going to kill you. Do you really think that that would that's work? Pretty, that's, I think it could work. Damn, holy shit. That's a, that'd be interesting. But <laughs> if, you go, shit. if you want to go back to being pro in something, Dyrus, this might be it. Yeah. Talk to Kai. He's got ideas here. <laughs> I, I mean, talk I to him right now. Anyway, stress. you're not going to remember it in like a mount in an hour, so just do it. We need I mean, all the weed we could get for that one. To, Kaya, to not... you really, you really, I don't think that would ever work in any concept. It, he's t- I, I think it would. I, I think you would get shot in the head. Well, well not maybe. Well, well, after you get shot, not. But well, as you're being shot at, so, you'd be shitting Kaya, your pants. Kaya, you know, you know what happens. And then you'd wake up in a hospital, and I'd go, "Hey." You remember me? Kaya, you know what happens to completely ruin your theory? I go on Twitter and I go, hey, everyone, I'm going to be on Fighting Island. Watch me at this time on well, NBC. Oh my, okay, and no. hey, I, we're going to do this. And then I get shot in the fucking head and everyone goes, why no, didn't Andrew no, come no, back no. from Fighting no, no. Island? He's you you do that right leading up to it. Yeah. As you step into the helicopter, I go, okay, well, you know what comes now? We give you the amnesia shot that we somehow developed. Right. And then to- everyone I told before going on wonders why I never come home. Uh, Andrew, do the people in the Big Brother house have communications to the outside? They don't. No, right? but when as the as show's as over, their pigeons. welcoming family gives them a hug and says, we're sorry you didn't win. <laughs> Not no, where the okay, fuck That's the point. I, th- you? I don't know what you're missing here. Okay, so Fighting Island, the entire point is that it's a death game, right? Yeah. Well, not in your world. But it's not really. Airsoft for adults. <laughs> okay. Uh, no. So Kai is purporting that it's real, but they lie about it, right? No, it's not. Re- I'm saying it's not real. It is paintball, but you think it's real. Oh. Okay. I thought you were actually murdering people and just oh. telling them they weren't. You weren't. <laughs> just telling them they didn't no. die. Yeah. You're not dead. I no. swear to God. All right. No. No. Uh, oh well. Uh, you come to me. I tell you. You you just sign up for our reality TV game show. Mm-hmm. None of this is lethal. If you get shot, you don't really die. It just knocks you out and you're out of the game. Mm-hmm. And then I inject you with the amnesia drug and you forget I told you that. Okay, that sounds and, uh, amazing. Until you get shot out. Okay, yeah, fantastic. Where do I sign Copyrighted up? Copyrighted under the official I'm absolutely brand. absolutely up for trying that. That sounds wonderful. That is a million dollar idea. I'd be scared shitless. <laughs> it has been done. Probably kill myself, but... <laughs> yeah, there'd be a oh, lot of liability would... there. What if someone jumps off a cliff to escape the horrors? 
Well, it was in the oh, way, but yeah. they forgot that. We'd have to it. make it like Westworld, where the guns don't work against the guests. Ah, somehow. right. So you can only shoot each other, but not yourself with it. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can still shoot yourself, but it's not going to actually kill you, is what I'm trying to say. If you jump right. off a cliff, however, I don't know, I guess well, that's what the waiver is for. Yeah, I mean, everything can be made out of foam and jello. <laughs> yeah. So fighting Jello Island. Yeah. Where you have to eat your way to victory. Uh, yeah. That, that's how we do it. Jairus, do you have any ideas for fun game shows for the whole family? I'm not a very creative person. <laughs> <laughs> this is the pinnacle of creativity. Yeah. yeah the uh, island where you kill each other. Yeah, that's as, that's as creative as it gets. <laughs> <laughs> he just well, wants to be on the although, island. Although, Kaya, have you seen Solitary? Uh, no. The game show where they lock people in a singular room for like a year? And they compete Fun. in contest. It's it's incredible. I love it. You should, I think you would like, like it a lot. Jail. Exact opposite of what Kaya was pitching. No, but I'm saying it's it's a similar it, idea. It just where sounds like it's, Big Brother. It's fake, but they try to make it feel real. Dyrus, on to the next important question. Have you heard Charlie's joke? Oh Lord. No. Fuck. <laughs> Tell it. Oh Lord. All right. Well, it's kind of a it's kind of become a tradition around these parts. Uh, I developed. One of perhaps the most potent jokes in all of comedy. It's almost impossible to at least not elicit a hearty belly laugh. So brace yourself, Dyrus. You're you're gonna be you're gonna be slapping that knee real hard. And it's a true okay. story too. It sounds right. like it's some made up sci fi, but this is a real thing that happened to me. Makes it funnier. It's even it's 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 wild. It's just wild. Okay. okay. All right. So this was about like probably eight months ago now, and I was driving down this road called I four. It's the interstate. Pretty popular road, actually. It sees a lot of traffic quite often, a lot of traffic jams. And I was cruising down this road, going the speed limit. I'm not quite rebellious enough to go above that. And as I was driving down I-4, I saw this sign for a restaurant. Nothing particularly special about it, just a standard old restaurant. It was called Boardwalk Burgers. Not not too interesting of a name, really. Just, you know, wholesome family diners, homeless people slapping some patties on the foreman's. Just a good time, really. And with my razor-sharp wit, I saw that sign. And I said, boardwalk burgers, more like board burgers, because those burgers aren't having any fun. I think he gave you a kiss. <laughs> <laughs> it took me a while to get that one, actually. Oh, thank God. See, it's, it's, a, it's a thinking man's joke, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not the fastest person, so... Uh, no, it's, trust yeah, me, you I, got it a lot quicker than, than some other people. Some people didn't even laugh at all, they just didn't understand it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I tried really hard to think on that one. I didn't want to be the, one of those people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, so, I imagine once, they, once it hit them, like, oh, bored, <laughs> bored. Oh, I get it. And they probably laughed real hard off the off the episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. Jesus. Yeah. The magnum opus of comedy. You know, how I feel about that joke is kind of like... Um, I mean, you might have heard this one before, but let me let me hit you with a oh, thank God, like yes. a thinking question because I I feel like it's one of these questions. So, Charlie, imagine you're inside of a metal box. You have a glass of water. How do you get out? I don't know. It just kind of sounds like my apartment right now. I'm trying to get out. <laughs> I I think I know the answer, but I won't drown yourself. Crack at it unless he wants me to. Yeah, until until he gives up. Yeah, all right, Char Charlie, announce it when you're done. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to figure it out. <laughs> Show your work. It's, it's pretty out. easy. Uh, all right, take it, Andrew. What, I don't know. All right, Dyrus, says. is the answer uh -huh. open the box? N no. Fuck. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> he was so confident. Ah, oh, I thought I tricked you. What's the answer? Um, so everyone's everyone's ready for the answer. I think so, yeah. I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, it's just, it's stupid. Um, so you just stop imagining. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, that's how I felt about your, your burger question. <laughs> you just kind of distract me from the, the original joke. I mean, you don't have to the so glass of water. I like, I like no, the entire I'm red not, herring of a glass of water. It had uh, no yeah, purpose I'm, being there. Yeah, I, I'm not trying to insult your joke. I'm just saying it's that it was that kind of joke, and a lot of people fall for it. Like it's so many, you could ask anyone. I mean, unless they heard it before, most people will fall for that. That's it's just pretty like, clever, yeah. 
Yeah, it's just like one of those jokes where it's like a plane crashes in between a certain like both bo- both borders where they bury the survivors, and then I'm mean, I'm sure if you heard that joke before, right? No, it sounds more like a riddle. Yeah, a riddle. I heard it in elementary school. What? Did, where did where they, they bury them? them? In a in a cemetery? Are you guys serious? <laughs> I don't know where they're fucking them. kidding me. <laughs> where, where, where they're from? <laughs> where their bodies uh, unrecoverable? Tyrus, do you want to? Do you want to? So, you can go uh, ahead. Oh, you, I'm you don't sure bury you know survivors, you idiots. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Literally heard that joke in first grade and remembered it to this day. Uh, well, it made an impact, I guess. Well, um, he probably told it to me. That he was on my playground. Little did I know, little baby Tyrus on the sandbox told me that. <laughs> it was fate. Well, fuck. I guess I am not smarter than a first grader. That show is deceptively hard. Well, it's fifth grader. Yeah, that's a lot better. And Jeff yeah. Foxworthy's a, a weirdo. <laughs> if you're watching this, Jeff Foxworthy, come on here and defend yourself. And prove if we're smarter than fifth graders. <laughs> Quiz us. Bring first graders on as well. No, no, had a, Jackson, we can't say that. All right. Only fifth graders. Much better. Kai, have you even spoken 18 minutes? What's on your mind? Uh, the episode on Spongebob with Squidward where they get the box. Oh, oh that's yeah. a good the episode. <laughs> yeah. Just, it's pretty much all I've been thinking about <laughs> since the box question. <laughs> <laughs> At first I thought it was a reference to that. Robot Pirate Iron. Oh, man. Classic Spongebob is absolutely fantastic. That, that can bring us to a question, bit. Dyers. Is there any childhood cartoon or anything from your childhood that you still believe, or still feel still very passionate <laughs> still feel very passionately about um hmm i mean it, i i've watched a lot of cartoons i just like a lot of them and spongebob was one of them mm-hmm. that's always a good choice yeah because there's like dexter's lab johnny bravo ed ed and eddie tom and jerry uh you know those stuff with bugs bunny um, all kinds sh- of stuff. Unless you want to start counting anime like Dragon Ball Z, I guess that was part of my childhood. <laughs> we don't count anime around here. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, that's for weebs. <laughs> we're 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 big yeah. strong men here. I don't think that many okay. people watch Dragon Ball Z anyway. Yeah, we eat pussy and kick ass around here. We don't watch none of those foreign cartoons. <laughs> okay. But speaking, how of- many vaginas have you seen? <laughs> how many? Let's put them on the leaderboard. <laughs> you don't have to answer that question. Jackson just what? asking about pussy appearances. I don't know. Come on, guys. Let's, say one let, the flesh. let's get serious. How many Can asses have you kicked? He's asking. <laughs> what's that, um, he's asking. Wheeler, what's that rustling noise? It's. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you could hear that. It sounded like a tumbleweed. No, it's. I have to make pee pee come out of my wiener really badly, but I'm holding it in. So I'm fidgeting now. That's what that noise is? Well, no, it's not me actually holding in the urine. Uh, Yeah, do you have tinfoil legs? What the fuck? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Well, the point I was going to say is out of all the cartoons that we watch from our childhood, I think the one that aged the best is probably Johnny Bravo. I I love it. uh, Aged the best? Aged the best? This is a whole debate that we could have. Yeah, we'll probably have to save that for That's That's a whole discussion. Yeah, we'll save that for when we don't want to embarrass ourselves, I guess. Yeah, when we don't have a literal League of Legends pro on our fucking podcast. Well, now he's just a big old streaming pro. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just uh, another dude. It has been. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's hugely successful, popular, talented, well-received, well-liked, and overall good guy has been. And, and on Dancing. that on that note... I think it's important that we go back to one of our one of our first questions for one of the first times we ever had a guest on here. And I think it's important that we make our way back to this one. Dyrus, is there any interesting masturbatory tells, tales you can tell us? Anything interesting happened during a masturbatory event in your life? What is a what does masturbatory mean? <laughs> like a, when you touch your wee wee yeah. and it goes hard and then stuff comes out if you're lucky. Yeah, you have to, um, there's a big old procedure you gotta follow for that stuff to come out. <laughs> I mean, not that I. Are you talking about like the first time I masturbated or something, or <laughs> I mean, just like, anything, anything crazy? Is there any like shared there. secrets when you live in a team house or anything? In that sense, 
<laughs> oh, do you jack um, off? Do you jack off to uh, League of Legends Rule Thirty Four? That's a good question. <laughs> Was that a good I, question? I, because I mean, he likes I'm, League I'm, of Legends, <laughs> therefore we have to ask it, Charlie. No, it doesn't answer. That's not. It's not my thing. I mean, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people do, but that's not me. Like, I don't. <laughs> so, which which champion in League of well, Legends what is you? Well, yeah, what is what is, is you? Don't over. Don't overload the don't overload the question here. He tell us the first time you masturbated. Then I think that could make for an interesting. <laughs> We've all shared our first experience. I mean, I, 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 chances I hope, are he's going to be this very young. Come back to like be a meme or like troll question for me from other people. But no, please. We guess, we asked literally everyone this. Don't. Yeah, yeah, every, we're like, not almost, fucking with you. Did everyone, did everyone answer? Oh, yeah. The, enthusiastically. In fact, you're taking the longest out of every guest. Uh, okay. well, <laughs> Pew- well, PewDiePie well, just, talked about jerking off a dog or something. That is right? completely true. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, I mean, completely could, true. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess I'll just say, I guess, third grade. So... Wow, is that early? That seems no. it's a little early. Yeah, that's, I didn't that's start till I was right like time. No, I didn't start till I was like nineteen. I Jesus, was, uh, <laughs> I was five feet tall in third grade, so I think I grew fast. I don't know. I don't fucking know. <laughs> the masturbatory game chose you. You were actually for never it. mind. I'm sorry. It was it was fourth grade. Sorry, I just thought it was third grade. You fucking liar. Wow. You know, I thought Dude. you were cool with third grade, but now you're just a late fourth grade bloomer. <laughs> late bloomer over here. Oh, God. It was, one, it was like one of those things where it's like, you didn't do it a lot. It's just like, you're like, what the fuck? What the fuck am I doing? You know? Yeah. <laughs> just, <laughs> My hands I'm there. just saying that's when it all started. That's all. Do you remember the specific video? Was it a video? A teacher, perhaps. What? What was the catalyst? Oh, it was a uh... Jesus Christ, Charlie. Ask him how he found his wiener while you're at it. <laughs> yeah, now you're just like a priest. God damn. So, God, I heard he said it was third grade. Just leave the kid be. So <laughs> it was one of the girls in my class, but it was like one of those Ooh. things where uh, do you do you remember those like commercial breaks where it's like the three girls and it was like Charlie's Angels or something. Oh, yeah. You know yeah. what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Totally they, Spies, was, right? Yeah, Totally Spies. You know, some, it, was it was when they would swing their hips back and forth and then I just pictured that girl doing it. So that, yeah, yeah that's it. I don't get the best of you. Many, many a first masturbatory event came from those Totally Spies, I imagine. Well, that show is literally just thinly veiled fetish material. So, Yes. I've never watched that show, by the way. I've, I've I've just seen the fucking commercial. Like, it just... Commercials fucking everywhere. It's just... I hate commercials. That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> you jacked off to one, though. I watched that show religiously. I wasn't a huge fan of it. It's a terrible fucking show. It. It's really bad. I liked it. I mean, you can like it, but it's still bad. Okay. Just like League of Legends. <laughs> <laughs> It's a love hate thing for me. Exactly. I, I can't really. I, I mean, I love it because I enjoyed playing. One time I played League for three days straight oh, when really? I was in closed beta. That's how addicted I was to Jesus. it. Jesus. And then, um, yeah, I mean, I also hate it because you, you already know why. But it, it's hard to hate because it made my career. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it definitely put you on a very successful path. So it's certainly worked out for you. Whereas Kai and I, we must have put like 150 hours in there and we never even got past silver together. Well, um, I've actually watched your videos before I was like a league player. Oh, I appreciate that, man. (laughs) Wow. So he's nostalgic for you, huh? Yeah, I remember all I was just browsing YouTube and one day I was just like, I like this guy's voice and he's also really funny. And so I went like on a marathon spree of watching your videos and it just helped me with stress with uh, everything in my life. I appreciate that, man. Thanks for the kind words. That's nice. (laughs) That's really sweet. So it's probably the most most wholesome moment that's happened in this show's history. Yeah, because usually it is about like poopy and ball sacks. Yeah. Yeah. Literally every other guest is like, I jack off to your videos nightly, man. (laughs) Just lather myself up and go to town. A little fun fact, a couple of our guests have actually come on the show with masturbatory tales prepared. Yeah. That's how ingrained in this, the soul of this show it is. 
It's wow. so ingrained we use the term masturbatory. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting professional about it, Andrew. Exactly. So, Darius, I think I think we've tortured you long enough. We've probably run long enough, unless anyone yeah. has any objections. Uh, do you have any final... Do you have any questions for us? Do you have any final thoughts? Do you have anything that you personally want to say right now? Um, I mean, I'm everything I've wanted to say, I've pretty much gotten out. I don't, I'm not a very good person when it comes to questions and stuff. I'm kind of just thinking or not thinking. I'm just, you did, just there. You did great this episode with answering stuff. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed all your answers. We were all building up to that masturbation story and you fucking nailed it, kid. You have potential. <laughs> oh. Buttering oh. him up. Well, that's that's good. I'm I'm just the kind of person when I get asked the question. Since I'm, I guess, so, I used to be more socially awkward. When people would come up to me and ask me questions, I would be excited too because I just wouldn't have anything to talk about, and so I just kind of ramble on in my answers usually. So I'm I'm glad. Mm-hmm. Well, do you, do you want to shout anything out? Yeah, is there anything you want oh, to talk yeah. about? Right, right. Any about upcoming that. projects or just anything at all? Um, not really. I mean, th- thanks for having me and everyone who's watched up to this point. Thank you guys for watching. Oh, oh that was right. <laughs> yeah, that is so sweet. That right. was really sweet. Well, yeah, we'll, thanks for we'll, coming on, man. Yeah, we'll help you out there. Yeah, so you. that's uh, Big Man Dyrus on Twitter, uh, the Flabbing Dyrus on YouTube. I think on Twitch you're uh, Die for Dyrus, or did you change it for Diddly Dyrus? <laughs> it's just, uh, it's just. <laughs> Wait, are you being serious? <laughs> yeah, your Twitch out, man. <laughs> I don't know. Do you know your own Twitch name? Am All right. I? All right. It's uh it's TSM underscore Dyrus. There you go. All right, there we there go. There we go. We like right. we like to get at least one shout out from all of our guests in some way. Okay. Yeah. Thank well you. thank you, Dyrus, for coming yeah, on. Thank you. thank you for spending the hour with us. We appreciate it. Yep. And, and thank you to everyone else who showed up and watched this episode. We appreciate all of you as well. There will be links in the description to a lot of different places that you can check out. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Bye, See everyone. you next week. All righty, goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye.